How's it going, Urshan College? Again, my name is Brandon Flynn, and today we're going to go over the chapter two of economics in your book uh, by Paul Krugman. So um, what we're going to talk about a little bit is a, the production possibility frontier. Now, what that means is it's going to simplify what it means to have gains from trade. Okay, and we talked about that as one of the 12 uh, principles of economics out of your book. Now, every country, again, has a finite uh, amount of resources. And on my side here, you're going to see a, a, a y-axis and an x-axis. And what that means is what we're going to do is we're going to put our possible things that we can produce. Now, we're only going to compare two products. Now, I know most countries in the entire world produces way more than just two things. Right? I mean, it's just obvious, right? But for the sake of just kind of explaining uh, economics and the gains from trade, we're just going to use two specific uh, uh, products. And, um, and those two things are jet, jet, small jets, and dreamliners, which I'm, I'm just going to pull straight from your book uh, just to make it easy for you to follow along. Let me just double check here um, to make sure that I'm still recording. And I am, so that's perfect. Uh, but before we start, um, let's go ahead and honor God with some prayer and beseech Him for some knowledge and understanding. Father, we thank You for this incredible day. We ask, Lord, that You continue to be with us. Help us to learn of You and help us to learn from You, Father. We pray, God, that You give us wisdom and knowledge in all the things that we do. God, guide our hands, lead us, Father. Be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and we will give glory and honor. And it's in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, guys. Um, so, first of all, we're going to use your book here and give you the uh, production possibility frontier. Um, and for short, I'm just going to put that up here, P, P, F, right? Production possibility frontier. Um, if you need a better definition, that'll be in your book. I don't want to take up too much time. I just want to make these videos as short as possible just to give you a quick understanding. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this kind of curve. Um, on here, we have our quantities of uh, small jets. So we'll put over here small jets. And over here, we have dreamliners. OK, so I'm going to try to do that this way here, right? Dreamliners, which are those giant uh, jets, right? The, those really, really big ones. Um, so this is the production possibility curve, we're going to say, of the United States. And they're going to put the, it's a couple of extremes, but they're going to go by fives here. So we'll do like five here. Um, it's going to go all the way over to uh, somewhere around 40 on this side. And there's some things, uh, numbers in between. So they give you 20 um, and randomly uh, they give you 28. So I don't know why but we're going to pretend 28's over here as well. Uh, and then at the extremes on our y-axis over here for the Dreamliners, um, we're going to say here we're going to go 5 again, uh, and then it's going to go all the way up to, looks like, 40, but they're going to give you some fictitious numbers here, 9, uh, and then again over here, uh, 15. Looks like a big jump for that, but that's okay. And then 40 way over here, it's okay? So 40. Now, um, on this particular production possibility frontier, they're going to show you some possible points uh, and where they can provide these particular products. So the extremes here are 40, and I put 40 over here. I apologize. It actually should be 30. Um, I'll go ahead and correct that. But 40 and 30. All right, so these are the extremes. And how this works in a uh, production possibility frontier curve um, it, you'll just take point A here all the way to the extreme, and I know it's not the straightest line. Uh, but what this represents is if I, as the country, let's say this is the United States, the U.S., right? So this is the U.S., the United States' uh, production possibility frontier. If I decide uh, to build 30 small jets as a country, that means all of my resources are uh, dedicated to those 30 small jets there then I no longer have the ability to build any Dreamliners. You see the, the deal here? You see the, the connection? So that means I'm only produce, I'm producing zero Dreamliners because I've used all of my technology, all of my land, all of my manufacturing power, and I'm producing small jets, which means I can no longer produce Dreamliners. 
with all the land that I own. Now the other side is I can produce just Dreamliners, and it looks like I do that better um, according to your book. Actually, I think I have this backwards. Uh, according to your book, this is 40, I apologize, and this is 30. So this one is 30, and this one is 40. I had it right the first time. So if I produce 30 Dreamliners, then uh, that means I no longer can produce small jets. Okay, so I, if I produce, all, if I take everything and I produce my 30 Dreamliners, I can no longer produce small jets. And what most countries do is they try to find a happy median. Well, if they're not trading, all right, this is we're pretending like they're not going to trade at this point. We're not, we're not going to compare the two countries yet, but we will get there. Um, so if I decide I want to produce 15, let's say over here on the uh, one side, and I produce 15. Uh, Dreamliners, that means I can only produce about five, they're not quite straight, but uh, in this case, actually they're going all the way to 20 with this one. This is how bad my deal is. So it would actually be something like this. So if I went 15 to 20, let's do the dots first, that's a lot easier. So if I produce 15, I can only produce about 20 uh, jets. So if I do 15 Dreamliners, that means I can only do 20 jets. And then if I go over to, uh, tw he says, they say 9, um, then it'll make me go all the way over here to 28. So then I'm only producing uh, 28. But I gave up a lot, which is approximately uh, about three quarters of the change there. So if I take my production possibility curve, and I go all the way through here from the extremes, it's going to look a little bit different because I messed up. But um, it's more actually truer to a, a production possibility curve than, than normal. Most countries don't have straight lines. They have curves anyway, uh, if you were to look at it. Now, this is point A here and point B there. Um, and then there's point C. Uh, if you wanted to, you, what will happen is if a country is producing out here, point C, let's say at 20 and 9, um, that means there's a slow turn in the economic process, right, in the economy. So something happened. There was a market failure. Uh, we didn't have the technology we had before. Something changed. People weren't uh, asking for it. Something really happened that wasn't uh, very good. And so um, in your book, we'll call it here, your book calls it a, uh, it's feasible, but it's not efficient. That means we're not using our, our stuff as efficiently, right? Um, there's a huge uh, lapse in the labor market. For example, every, let's pretend everyone moves. Or maybe this year, if we're looking at the production for one year, maybe there was a tsunami. L if, you, if you thought this was maybe uh, Puerto Rico uh, from 2018, uh, there was a huge lapse in production during that time, which makes a lot of sense, okay? Uh, so that's why you would, you would, this would happen. We don't want anything in here, okay? This means we're not, we're not producing to the best of our abilities. This means we are. Now, if somehow they find themselves out here at point D, where they're producing all of this, right? That means uh, that something happened that year or, or that time frame that we're taking a snapshot of. And that could be awesome. That means we had a great economic turnout or a new technology popped up where we can produce both. Or maybe we acquired some land somehow. Um, in some way, some miracle happened and uh, the country all of a sudden can produce out here. Okay, so uh, this is not a feasible place without some sort of economic growth. All right, um, this is this would be ultra efficient, yes, but not feasible because it's outside of what we can do with all the land that we have. Okay, awesome. So what will happen uh, with this, the idea of knowing a little bit about this is, is seeing the possible outcomes of what a country can do. You can actually make a, a production possibility frontier for yourself as an individual or for your church. What, how many pews do I have? So what's the production that I can actually get to? And if I decide to use everything for pews, I don't have any space uh, in my sanctuary for maybe a bigger platform. Um, but if I want to space it out for more platform, that means I have to give up pews. But how many pews do I give up? And how many pews are being uh, demanded? So there's a lot of different things you can use this for. In this case, we're talking on the uh, macroeconomic scale, which means on the big picture in the uh, world. So 
Um, thank you guys. I'm going to, to transfer to a different part of the video uh, to show you a little bit about the gains from trade, and you'll see the gains when we use one of these uh, production possibility frontiers. Thank you. Okay, welcome back to economics uh, for chapter two again. Uh, I just want to go over a little bit of uh, uh, gains from trade uh, with comparative advantage, which means we're going, that means if we're comparing two countries, so comparative, um, which one has the advantage of producing either or. And we're still going to talk about Dreamliners on one side and jets, small jets on the other. Um, and you can see here that Brazil has what's called an absolute disadvantage making both items, right? Making both uh, small jets and this compared to um, the U.S. where it can make, if it fully used everything to make jet liners, it can make 30 of them, if it used, or dream liners, if it used everything to make small jets, it can only, it can make 40 of them, which is 10 more than uh, they can in Brazil or 20 more than they can in Brazil over here. So you would say that Brazil has a absolute disadvantage and the United States would have an absolute advantage in comparison. But if the two work together and make some trade, they actually can consume more of both products because here's how it's going to work. We're going to talk about um, being more efficient in the product that they could produce. So what's going to happen is they're going to realize that if I, as the United States, produce uh, just um, Dreamliners, so I'll put Dreamliners back over here, Dreamliners, and this one is small jets, I know that I can produce 30 small jets and then trade, or uh, 30 Dreamliners, I'm, I apologize, and then trade for the small jets that Brazil makes. Now let's pretend that Brazil is going to use or consume 10 small jets. That's all their economy is really going to use. That means they're going to trade uh, the extra, this is what they're going to consume. They're going to, they're going to trade the extra small jets that they have. So we're going to pretend that they are going to maximize their production by just producing only small jets because now they're into, they're in an agreement with the United States that they'll trade the 10 small jets for, um, whatever, things that the United States will produce. In this case, they're going to concentrate on producing 30 of the Dreamliners. Now you're saying, well, why not produce 40? Because they have an advantage over them. Why not do that instead? Well, the idea you have to look at is for every uh, one of these Dreamliners they give up, uh, that they make, they're only giving up three quarters, or for every one of these uh, small jets they're, they're making, they're only giving up three quarters of a uh, Dreamliner. So what they need to do is figure out how much they're going to uh, give up. Now, again, this is only one third, right? For every uh, one Dreamliner they, they make, they lose three small jets, where for every one of these that they make, they only lose they lose 1.3, uh, 1.3, or four-thirds, right? For every four, it's, it's 1.3 if you were to do the math. So for every one of these small jets that they make, they lose uh, 1.3, or for every Dreamliner, they lose 1.3 small jets, right? So that's why they're going to instead make those because if for every one of these that they make they lose three small jets that's a huge problem they use they lose a lot more by producing the dreamliner so they're going to say you know what we're not very efficient at making dreamliners but you're very efficient at making dreamliners so here's what the deal i'm going to consume we only need 10 about 10 of them so i need about i uh, i only need about 10 what i'm going to do is i'm going to produce uh 30 of these, trade you 20. So now what will happen is if you at the United States will give me uh, 10 of your Dreamliners, right? So they're going to consume 10, give 20 over to the United States, and the United States is going to give them 10 Dreamliners. So here's the deal. Before, uh, because the United States, they're going to they're consume 20 uh, Dreamliners, Whereas, and they're going to consume, they want to consume about 20, um, oops, 
consume about 20 uh, small jets, right? And, this, and these guys want to do 10 of both as well. All right, so 10 uh, small jets and uh, Dreamliners. Now, to get 10 Dreamliners, they're going to say, you know, I'm not going to produce any more of these. Um, I'm not going to produce any more Dreamliners, but I still want to consume 10 Dreamliners. I'm going to use that. My people in my country are going to use 10 uh, fancy planes, okay? Um, so they're going to take those uh, 20 left over, and they're going to trade over to the United States because the United States wants 20, okay? Now, if they didn't trade at all, all they could make, let's say they try to get try, try to get both, right? If they didn't trade at all and they produced eight, because that's the most that they could produce while also producing uh, some of the small jets. So they produce eight Dreamliners, okay? Then uh, they can only produce six jets, which is less than both of the consumptions that they want. They want to consume 10 of each of them. Well, they can only produce, if they were doing both, they can only produce eight Dreamliners and only produce six uh, small jets, which means they're not meeting the demand that the that Brazil wants. So in order to gain, what they're going to do in order to do this is they're going to go over here, to the United States. And say, I, my people want more Dreamliners and they want more, um, and they want less jets. But I know you want jets. Uh, so the United States goes, all right. Listen, if I were to produce, if using everything to produce Dreamliners, I could probably produce 18 um, and also use every, some parts of it to make. Uh, small jets. I'll produce 18 because for every uh, three of these I make, I give up uh, four, right? Or it's three quarters, three to four here. Um, so, it, so, or, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to make 18 Dreamliners, and then which will only allow me to produce 16 uh, small jets, right? Because that's as far as our, our production goes with all the land and technology and people that we have, okay? So with all of that, we're going to say this is all I can produce here, all right? But here's the deal. What I'll do is I'll produce all, I'll take all of my land, and I'm going to uh, focus on producing my 30 uh, Dreamliners, and I'm going to trade you 10, Brazil. So I'm going to take my 30 Dreamliners, and I'm going to send over... Uh, 10 of them to you, which will leave me with 20, right? That'll leave me with 20. So now I'm still above my 18, right? Because now, and if I did it myself, I would only have 18. But I'm, now I'm above my 18, and I'm meeting my con con uh, um, consumer base. I'm meeting my demand. And I have 10 left over, so I'm going to give it to you. Now you meet your demand. And now I'm like, well, I still need 20 jets. Well, guess what? I produced 30, and I only need 10. So I'm going to take my 30 jets, and I'm going to bring them over here, or at least 20 of them, right? I'm going to put 20 of them over here to you. And now you are not only, if you did it by yourself, you could only do this. But now that we're trading, now we're doing this. So this is how countries gain. They look at something, and they specialize in what they do best. And that could be very, very, very efficient for you as an individual to just look at what I can do best, especially if you're going to start a church or especially if you're in a church. One of the best things to do, uh, or even a business in general, is to figure out what are my strengths as an individual? What do I do best? Am I, <laughs> do I produce more um, small jets than the other person? Or can I do this? Um, I, even if the other person does it better, but he's better, or he or she is better spent doing something else, maybe I focus in on my strengths, and then I let somebody else focus in on their strengths. And so that way, one person isn't doing a lot of things. And you got to learn how to do that in any business, as an individual, or um, if you're trying to lead individuals, volunteers or not. How do I help them realize their potential? How do I help them find their strengths so that way I can maximize my output here so I can trade my skill for their skill and then get more of what I want if, than if I did it on my own. Very important lesson and I hope you learned something from it. I love you guys. I hope you do awesome and I'll see you in chapter three.